This is a continuation of my video entitled, Some People Want to Control What Makes People Happy. There were many comments on it, some decent discussions as well. So let me clarify a few things, as well as reiterate some things. I find it strange that some people, especially on the right, but not always, think that videos of people saying that you don't need children to be happy is the same thing as telling people that the only way to be happy is to not have children. Literally nobody is saying the latter. Nobody. Sure, some people talk about the fact that they don't have to worry about the responsibilities of raising a child, but that doesn't translate to saying that you will be miserable if you do raise a child. You know, again, nobody is saying that. If you're getting that triggered by someone advocating for a different lifestyle than yours, then perhaps it's you that needs to look inward a little bit. Maybe it's you that isn't actually happy. There are plenty of pundits out there claiming that you'll never be happy, and you have no future, and you'll never contribute anything significant to society unless you have kids. They'll make excuses for those statements. They'll say it's just their opinion. They'll also say that it's a biological reality and that we should conform to it, but also that it's just their traditional view of the world. Endless excuses. There are plenty of people who use the J.D. Vance wording, who talk negatively about childless cat ladies. J.D. Vance even once said that childless people are sociopathic. Yeah, endless excuses. Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro, Michael Knowles, Andrew Clavin, you know, pretty much everyone on the Daily Wire. People like Mark Dice, Salty Cracker, so many others. It's very common to hear them making negative statements about those who don't have kids, and even worse things about people who say they don't want to have kids. They somehow find those who push the notion that you don't need to have kids to be happy to be a threat to their chosen traditional lifestyle. If the ideas spread enough, it might spread to their kids. And that would be tragic, according to them. When everything is about carrying on your genes, anything else is biological blasphemy. Granted, some of it is about ensuring that you will have people to take care of you in your old age. And that's certainly a nice thing. But not having that, biologically, doesn't guarantee a miserable existence. There are plenty of ways to contribute positively to the world without creating offspring. And there are plenty who have, like Susan B. Anthony, Nikola Tesla, Isaac Newton. Think about how many childless, amazing, timeless musicians have been out there who didn't have kids. There are plenty of ways to get support. There are countless ways to create your own family and have gatherings. It doesn't have to be a biological family. And I get that some people don't want that kind of messaging around. That doesn't make them righteous. And I'm not suggesting in any way that being childless should be the social default. It certainly shouldn't. But I see no problem with when people are trying to say, Hey, I'm childless and I'm still doing all right. There's a lot that it frees me up to do, actually. Don't get down on yourself for not wanting to have kids. Yeah, I see no problem with that kind of messaging. You know, on the flip side, you know, I don't really get antinatalism. We do need to have a reasonable number of people to sustain ourselves and to sustain the systems we have, you know, that we operate under. But I also don't get this notion that we need to create as many humans as possible, like Elon Musk and many others seem to advocate for. The more people, the harder they are to manage. The crazier people's behavior in concentrated areas becomes, like in big cities. Small towns are relaxed for a good reason. The population is low. Look, if you want to have kids, great. If you don't want to have kids, great. Live your life how you choose. Just saying.